Good afternoon, friends. Today we have Dr. Grace Thomas with us. She has done her PhD from Mahatma Gandhi University, Kerala. Her research interests are synthesis of enantiomerically pure metal organic frameworks, synthesis of natural products and design, and synthesis of chiral auxiliaries and catalysts from the chiral pool. She has worked as scientific research officer in Institute of Intensive Research in Basic Sciences, MG University. She was a patent specialist in Speridian Technologies, Technopark Trivandrum, and was a CSIR postdoctoral fellow in the School of Chemical Sciences, MG University. She also worked as a consultant of patent drafting, technical writing, patent searches for background, art, and planes chart analysis. She has also done several DST projects. Her publications include one US patent, two Indian patents, and several articles in international journals. Let me welcome Dr. Grace Thomas to today's session on introduction to intellectual property rights. Welcome, Grace, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Rani, for the nice introduction and good afternoon to all. Today, I'll give a general idea about the intellectual property rights. Shall we start? Okay. So what is intellectual property? So intellectual property is something produced using human intellect, which has commercial value. So often it is intangible in nature. That means we cannot uh, see it, but we can feel it and usually contained on a tangible form like a fixed medium, like paper, CD, computer chips, etc. So what is intellectual property right? Intellectual property right should not be confused with intellectual property. Intellectual property right is actually the right that is vested in the asset and not the asset itself. For example, an idea or invention is an intellectual property, but a patent, which is regist patent registration, is an intellectual property right. And a customer or a price list is an intellectual property, whereas the right of confidenti confidentiality is an intellectual property right. Then again, the secret production method is your intellectual property, but the right that is given by the government to be kept it as a trade secret is an IP, intellectual property right. And a brand or a trade name is intellectual property and a trademark registration is intellectual property right. So that is by definition, intellectual property right is the legally enforceable exclusive right granted to the owner of the intellectual property for a limited period of time. And this intellectual property right can be assigned or licensed for financial benefits. Actually, intellectual property rights are uh, related to financial benefits only. Otherwise, if you have an invention and you don't need any financial benefit, you can publish it instead of uh, protecting your invention as an intellectual property right like patents. So how this intellectual property laws work? They give the owner the affirmative rights, not only the protection, but it is the affirmative right given to the owner of the intellectual property. And it allows the owner of the intellectual property to file a lawsuit against a transgressor. And this Intellectual property laws cannot stop a transgressor actually. So coming to the details, what are the uh, different types of intellectual property rights? We can generally classify this intellectual property rights into two broad areas. That is the industrial property rights, which includes the patents, rights on designs, trademarks, then plant breeders rights and geographical indications. And other broad area is copyright and related rights of which uh, Amu will be talking today about. 
and first we can see a um, what is copyright so copyright laws offer protection to the expressions of idea and not for the idea as such for uh, for a um, to get a copyright for your expressions you have to uh, convert your idea into some sort of expression and this copyright gives an exclusive right to the owner like the right of reproduction right for adaptation and translation then right of distribution right of public performance and right of broadcasting and it actually protects all types of original literary artistic and scientific works which are published or not like the literary works like drama novels etc musical works dramatic works then pictorial or graphic and sculptural works motion pictures and other audio visual works like cinematographic work then sound recordings pantomimes and other choreographic works then architectural works then software and multimedia productions all these comes under the copyright so some illustrative examples if you look into some examples of this copyright for literary works it is actually given to novels diaries poems etc these are some examples only musical works include symphonies jazz improvis improvisation etc and the choreographic works include dance ballet and artistic works include paintings engravings sculptures etc and architectural works includes buildings themselves then figurative works include maps drawings and charts of a scientific nature cinematographic works include movies and video photographic works include photographs photographers etc and program works include computer programs so these all these comes under copyright and what is the term of this copyright in most of the other countries other than in india it is actually 60 years uh, the lifetime of the owner plus 60 years that is 60 years from the beginning of the calendar year next following the year which the owner dies because after the owner dies the copyright uh, will protect your work for another 60 years that is in india most of other countries it is 50 years and in us and europe it is 70 years that is the lifetime plus 50 60 and 70 in other parts in india it is 60 years plus lifetime of the author now coming to another intellectual property that comes under industrial property that is industrial designs so the protection here you receive is only for the appearance that is the aesthetic look of the article and not how it works it's only for the design for example the design of an electrical jug that comes under industrial design and this design registration is intended to protect designs which have an industrial or commercial use and the duration of protection is initially for 10 years and this can be extended for another term of 5 years again the designs of stamps labels tokens then cards cartoons or parts of an article not sold separately they cannot be registered under this industrial design so usually these industrial designs are the features of shape then configuration pattern or uh, the ornamental or composition of lines or colors or their combination so it is actually ornamental or the aesthetic look that is uh, registered under this industrial design so that nobody else will copy your design so actually uh, 15 years ago this is uh, quoted in time magazine companies competed on price today it is quality the same product the different when the different companies sell they actually compete on quality 
tomorrow it will be the design because if the price and quality are comparable then people look for good designs the aesthetic look becomes very important okay so when companies are competing at equal price and functionality design is the differential that matters so design uh, registration under this design industrial design is important for your, for recognizing your product and for the the people will uh, go after the design because the beautiful uh, products uh, people will buy so here this is another example where the fruit basket design here actually the method of manufacture is not protected by the design but only the uh, design of that fruit basket that is a pattern of the basket is protected under the industrial design so this gives the exclusive right against unauthorized copying of your uh, product for example you can see these are examples of industrial designs where uh, each design each design will be unique for the company or the product now coming to trademarks what are trademarks trademarks are generally a brand or a logo and that actually distinguishes the goods or services of an enterprise from that of its competitors and a trademark indicates the source of manufacture or trade origin of the goods or services and hence it protects the goodwill of the undertaking the registration of a new trademark is necessary because an unregistered trademark acquires sufficient distinctiveness and reputation in the marketplace only after a long period of its launching because people should recognize it and then only it will get attractive business but if you have registered uh, your product under this trademark you can market it using the trademark and it is distinctive for a product for example lion that is the distinctive trademark for date syrup we all know annapurna is the distinctive trademark for wheat powder cycle for agarbatti then apple for computers and these are well known uh, trademarks of well known companies we are all familiar with these trademarks the coca cola trademark the honda trademark the hp then mcdonald's nokia cnn the television channel puma pepsi all these trademarks we are familiar with so in order to uh, get a trademark you have to register it otherwise other people can also take your trademark or uh, make slight modification or and market it so you have to register your trademark so there are a number variety of marks like fanciful trademarks are there then invented words for example kodak is there then arbitrary trademarks are there that is having real meaning but no relation to goods for example apple apple for computers there is no relation between apple and computers actually then there are suggestive trademarks also which will give a hint of the product that is baby dry for nappies i think and uh, the brand is actually uh, valued based on this trademark the brand will get a uh, valuation so this is uh, a valuation that is published by the japanese patent office that is the coca cola the trademark has a value of 6.2 trillion yen then malboro has 6.2 trillion yen ibm has 3.1 trillion yen sony has 1.9 trillion yen and then these cnn dhl computers like my uh, the trademarks of microsoft intel unix etc these are having high brand value some examples only some examples are mentioned here so then coming to the uh, next intellectual property that is geographical indications so geographical indication is a notice to the customer that 
the product comes from the specified geographical area. Therefore, geographical indication protects the commercial interest of the people in the region where the product originates. So this is actually related to a specific geographical area where the product is made or uh, a particular plant variety like, Na for example, Nagpur orange. Those oranges which are grown in Nagpur region, they are, um, they come under the tagged as uh, the Nagpur orange under this geographical indication. We say that it's a geographical, it has got a geographical indication tag, like Aran Mula Mirror, Kanchipuram Silk, and etc. And all the producers in this particular region can use this geographical indication, even though they have different trademarks. For example, Darjeeling Tea. So Tata can say Tata's Darjeeling tea if the tea is grown in Darjeeling. So these are some other examples of um, different products that has got geographical indication. Basmati rice, Darjeeling tea, Alfonso mango, then Kolapati chapel, etc. etc. So these are connected. These products are actually connected with a particular region geographical region. Now coming to trade secret. Trade secret is uh, also called as a soft intellectual property. Soft IP we call it as uh, trade secret is called as a soft intellectual property. So a typical example is Coca-Cola. So actually, if you look into the history, because this is because I have told you that copyright has uh, been given to a particular period of time, industry design also a particular period of time is there, but geographical indication does not have any time limit. People can market it with the geographical uh, indication tag uh, for any time, but other because the patent is awarded for 20 years only. Uh, after that, it will become a public uh, property like it will be in the public domain. So you can exclude others uh, from using your invention only for 20 years. After 20 years, anybody can use it or sell it or make it or do whatever they want or else uh, you have to modify your invention and then you have to apply for a new patent so that your patent can be protected again. Okay, so it can be extended uh, to some more time. Actually, in U if you are awarded with a US patent, initially you will get the patent uh, for uh, 16 years only. Then you can extend it up to five years. After that, it will be in the public domain. But what Coca-Cola did, they never patented the, the process of um, making this Coca-Cola drink. Okay, so... Uh, Coca-Cola soft drink was invented in 1886 and they never protected it by a patent, but they protected it by trademark for the name Coca-Cola, then for by an industry design for this very special design of the Coca-Cola bottle. So that is actually supposed to be in the shape of a woman wearing a long skirt, long skin tight dress. And the process of the Coca-Cola drink is a secret and is only known by two persons in the world and they are not allowed to travel together so that there is no chance of them dying at the same time in an accident. And the secret of the Coca-Cola process was well kept during all these years and nobody is able to produce a drink with exactly the same taste till today. So you all know that Pepsi-Cola, its biggest competitor, has a different taste. So by keeping it as a trade secret, Coca-Cola was able to keep their intellectual property from 1886 to present. So that is uh, the importance of trade secret. So if you want uh, to protect your invention or if you want to keep it as a secret within yourself, then you ha you can keep it as a trade secret. But beware that you should be very careful about others copying or um, copying your invention or whatever is there. So now coming to 
patents. So patent uh, is an important intellectual property right. So patents are actually uh, a right that is granted for an invention. And that invention can be a product or a process that provides a new way of doing something or that offers a new technical solution to a problem. And it provides the owner of the patent with protection for their invention. And it is actually granted for a limited period of time that is generally 20 years in India. And by definition, it is the exclusive right to prevent third parties from making, using, offering for sale, selling or importing the patented product. So why are patents necessary? Because it provides incentives to the individuals and it rec recognizes their creativity and offer the possibility of material reward for their marketable inventions. And these incentives will always encourage innovation. So even before this period, great inventors like Galileo were conscious of the need for protecting their inventions. And while filing his application for obtaining patent for his invention of a water racing machine in 1594, Galileo pleaded that legal protection will make him a better inventor. So patents are necessary. So this is an example of a, one of the first patents that is the world's first instant noodle patent made in droughts into the global market by way of patents. So this entered into the global market. This instant noodle entered into the global market by this patent, by, this, uh, by the protection of the invention by patents. So this Mr. Momofuku uh, of the Nissan Food Products Limited Japan had embarked on a question to create noodles that could be eaten anywhere with just a bowl and a chopstick. So his research actually resulted in successful development of world's first instant noodles and it was named as chicken ramen in 1958. So this actually turned out to be a big hit and crude imitations appeared in market. And Nissan used, Nissan used its patents on manufacturing methods to combat counterfeit. And intellectual property by way of patents allowed to retain their exclusively. So, so they got the patent and they captured the business, the global market by patenting their instant noodles. Then this intellectual property also uh, can be used as a tool to compete with multinationals. For example, the case of Gold Touch Technologies versus Microsoft. So this Gold Touch was a small company and it developed an ergonomic keyboard maneuvered into different positions to suit this user needs and mouse design. So they filed applications for patents for these products. And then after getting filing their patents, they gave the license to Lexmark and IBM. And after that, subsequently, they approached Microsoft to discuss about licensing their products with the Microsoft. But that didn't work. And a year later, this elements of the novel mouse design found incorporated in Microsoft's mouse. So Gold Touch start losing their sales of their mouse. And the product, because the product branded with the logo Microsoft was more acceptable than this lesser known Gold Touch. So the power of Microsoft logo greatly reduced the potential sales of Gold Touch despite the design. The originality of the design was Gold Touches, but still uh, it reduced their business. So, but what did Gold Touch do? 
only because of their patent, Gold Touch could even think of stopping multinational Microsoft from selling the patented, from selling their patented products. So this was an advantage of the intellectual property. They could sue Microsoft uh, for imitating their mouse design. Then this is another example of the power of patent where the Polaroid versus Kodak instant camera story. So Polaroid was the inventor of instant camera and obtained a broad patents in 1960s. And Kodak started developing their own technology to beat Polaroid's patents and introduced their version of the instant camera. After Polaroid sued Kodak for infringement of 12 of their patents, they won the suit and they were awarded more than 1 billion US dollars. And this drove Kodak out of instant picture business for 15 years. So this shows the power of patents. So this will give a better idea of uh, the different industrial property. Uh, if you take a pressure cooker, so you can patent the inventions related to the constructional features like the mechanism of the safety valve or the mechanism of the pressure cooker that will come under the intellectual property right patents and the any modification in the shape or pattern or configuration like shape of the handle or body portion of the pressure cooker that comes under designs and the word name logo which is registrable will come under trademark for the same pressure cooker prestige hawkins maharajas maharaja these are trademarks so this is another example where all the ip uh, protection uh, comes in for example if we take the case of blackberry the intellectual property behind the blackberry are the patent that is it is patented as a display for a handheld computing device uh, which includes the display panel, circuit board, carrying display electronics for the display panel, etc., etc., uh, which are this uh, patent is owned by Research in Motion Limited. And the trademark of BlackBerry that has been uh, registered under trademark registration, and they got the number as TMA 638068, and the registrant is the same company that is the Research in Motion limited and again the industry the design of that phone is registered under the industrial design and uh, it is uh, registered as uh, giving the title handheld electronic device and the registrant is also the research in motion limited so uh, this uh, in the single Entity that is the BlackBerry telephone. It has a patent, a trademark, and in an industrial design is also registered by this Research in Motion Limited. And again, Coca Cola can also be taken as an example where all the industrial property rights come in because the local logo of Coca Cola is uh, an example for trademark. Then shape of the bottle is an industrial design. So they might have obtained some patents in respect of the, the bottling equipment and the copyright in respect of the text or database or artistic work appearing on its website. They might have protect, they can protect it by copyright. So a single product can be protected by more than one IPA. And the composition of the drink actually, they kept it as a trade secret. So what is actually a patent? So when you disclose your invention, patents are given for awarded for inventions. And when you disclose the invention to the government where you want to get the uh, patent because patents are territorial in nature. That means it has a jurisdiction like uh, if you uh, if you are awarded with an Indian patent, your invention will be protected in India only. So if you have a US patent, your invention will be pro protected in US only. So likewise, it is a an exclusive right for a limited period actually granted by the particular government. So in order to get a patent, you have to disclose your invention to the government by filing an application. And it is actually a contract with the society. So what is the inventor gives to the society? 
it will give a written description of his or her invention that sufficiently teaches one of ordinary skill in the art that means that that can sufficiently teach a person who is skilled in that particular area how to make and use the claimed invention and that sets forth the best mode at the time of filing the patent application so you can explain your invention to others so that they won't take your invention and what the inventor gets from the society it's a 20 year monopoly from the filing date to exclude others from practicing the claimed invention that means whatever you are claimed you have claimed in the invention so what are the basic requirements for a for an invention to get a patent so as we as i have already mentioned only inventions are patentable so it should be and the invention should be a novel invention it should have an inventive step and it should have an industrial applicability and it should not fall under the definition of the non patentable inventions there are a lot of non patentable inventions and it enables the disclosure of the disclosure of your patent to the public so what do we mean by the novelty of invention novelty means it should not be disclosed in the prior art prior art means in the literature so prior art can be a published material or it can be anything that is presented or disclosed to the public uh, in any meeting or conference or whatever it is if you have disclosed your invention then it is there in the it is called as the prior art so you have to keep your invention as a secret to yourself before filing your patent application otherwise it will come under the prior art and publications means it is publicly known or worked and common general knowledge also comes under this publication and this prior art also includes all the documents in foreign languages disclosed in any format in any country of the world so and now what is inventive step so your invention should be a new one which is not disclosed anywhere in the world in any form and now the second condition is an inventive step so what do you mean by an inventive step so inventive step means a feature of an invention that involves the technical advance as compared to the existing knowledge or it should have a, and having economic significance or both and it should be like it should not make it should make the invention not obvious to a person skilled in the art what does it mean that i will explain in the next slide that means you your invention should have an inventive step that is not obvious to a person skilled in the art that is also called inventive step is also inventive step is also called non obviousness of your invention so this is an example where uh, your invention does not have an inventive step or uh, non obviousness for example the prayer art is a caster for facilitating the movement of a chair so the present invention if you are using the casters for facilitating the movement of a table then there is no inventive step it is obvious to a person that if you can use it for the table as well so this is not acceptable as a patent then but there you can make some inventive steps with the uh, caster like this but when you uh, come to the marketing issue if somebody has already patented this caster and you are making an uh, an inventive step and a new uh, modification which was not obvious and you want to market it and if this is under the uh, patent um, uh, right period then you have to get a permission from the maker of this caster for Uh, marketing your new invention even though you get the patent 
So this is another uh, scientific example of a patentable invention where, so if you are isolating an antibody and you never knew that it was an antibody for a specific antigen and you never knew that this uh, particular substance has an antigenic property. So you can say the antigen you have this, uh, you have invented is a new one and you fire your uh, antibody is a new one and you are describing the, describing the invention sufficiently so that your patent will be awarded. Then this will actually meet all the uh, requirements for patentability of your invention and you can inv uh, you can file your patent application and get your uh, invention patented because uh, it was not known to anybody that uh, the particular compound that you are isolated as an antibody and a particular substance uh, which has got an antigenic property that property also was not known so you have dis uh, invented the antigenic property the isolated the antibody and you have sufficiently described your invention and you get it patented and the same example if you take and the antigen was known, but it was not uh, known to be an antigenic uh, substance. And if uh, you have isolated an antibody, then everybody knows that antigen has an anti antigen will produce an antibody. Okay, so that is an obvious invention. And so you cannot patent that. So that is actually you are discovering a new property of a known antibody. So that does not render the antibody new because it was known that it is an antibody for a particular antigen. So you cannot get it patented. A number of inventions which are not patentable in India. What are they? First is an invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to well-established natural laws. For example, you are claiming that you have made a perpetual motion machine giving output without input. That is against the natural law. So you cannot claim it as a, a new invention and it is not actually patentable in India. So another example is a claim for a method of plating copper with iron comprising the step that means that comprises the step of immersing a copper piece in an aqueous solution containing iron layer on said copper piece. We know that this is against a natural uh, plating um, principle. So that is not patentable in India. Again, an invention, the primary or intended use or commercial exploitation of which could be contrary to the public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice to human, animal or plant life or health or to the environment are not patentable in India. For example, an apparatus for gambling or a machine for theft, which are uh, contrary to the public order and morality. And again, a gambling apparatus or a method of gambling, these are not patentable in India. Likewise, method of adulteration of food or drug or medicine, these are not patentable. Then the mere discovery of a scientific principle or the formulation of an abstract theory or discovery of any living thing or non-living substances occurring in nature are not patentable. For example, laws of preservation of energy, law of universal gravitation, then theory of relativity, then discovery of an ore or a natural phenomena. These are not patentable. Then another thing is the mere discovery of a new property or the simple new use of a non-substance or the use of a non-process machine or apparatus unless such non-process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactant is not patentable. For example, a new use of aspirin for cardiovascular disease that is not patentable because aspirin is already a, a non-drug and a new use of that cannot be patented. Okay, 
then new use for a non substance is also not patentable for example second or third use of a non substance is not patent so again a substance which is obtained by just mixing resulting only in the aggregation of the properties of the components are not patentable in india for example sand and salt mixture not showing any new property or a mixture of sugar and colorants in water to produce a soft drink because the sugar has its property the color has its own property so you are just mixing it uh, to produce a new soft drink it is not patentable then a composition of two drugs that is paracetamol and ibuprofen for curing fever and pain that is also not patentable then a mere arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of known devices each functioning independently of one another in a known way is also not patentable for example umbrella with fan umbrella has its own uh, function fan has its own function you are simply making an umbrella with a fan then it is not patentable likewise bucket fitted with torch or clock with a transistor in a single cabinet or a play come educational device these are not patentable then any method of agriculture or horticulture is not patentable in india for example method of cultivation of algae or a method of producing a mushroom plant or a method of producing a new form of a non plant these are not patentable in india again any process uh, process for the medicinal surgical curative prophylactic diagnostic or therapeutic or other treatment of human beings or any process for a similar treatment of animals to render them free of disease or to increase their economic value or that of their products are not patentable in india for example a milk uh, produce uh, more milk producing uh, process or something like that these are not uh, patentable in india for example a method of treatment of cancer or removal of dental plaque or a method of measuring the condition of internal organs of the human body by x ray or preparatory methods for diagnosis these are not patentable in india then plants or animals in whole or any part thereof other than microorganisms but including seed varieties um, and species and essentially biological processes for production or propagation of plants and animals are not patentable in india for example clones and new variety of plants are not patentable in india but uh, these are patentable in some other countries like us and all and a computer program per se other than its technical application to industry or a combination with hardware cannot be patented but computer program you can uh, um, uh, protect your computer program if you are uh, doing a new coding or something that comes under copyright that is uh, the te technical application of software is patentable and software combined with the hardware including embedded systems are also patentable but software uh, computer program per se is not patentable but you can protect it under copyright laws then again an invention which in effect is traditional knowledge or which is an aggregation or duplication of known properties of traditionally known component or components are not patentable for example use of turmeric in wound healing it is a traditional knowledge and then method for controlling fungi on plants by the aid of a hydrophobic extracted neem oil these are all uh, not patentable you might have heard about the turmeric uh, patent war between indian government and us because this turmeric in wound he healing is a traditional knowledge in india but some uh, us companies uh, they uh, filed for patent applications uh, using turmeric uh, like uh, uh, bandages and all but in the indian government actually uh, filed uh, a, a, they protest they actually had to go after this patent filing and there was actually 
a war between indian government and us government and finally uh, us government withdrawn uh, the patent applications actually they were not awarded in us uh, for uh, including the traditional knowledge in of india again uh, this name and all uh, there are a lot of patent war between indian government and us uh, you might have heard about basmati rice and all then atomic energy related inventions are also not patentable in india so no patent shall be granted in respect of any invention relating to atomic energy for example the in the inventions relating to compounds of uranium beryllium thorium plutonium radium graphite lithium and more as notified by central government from time to time so what to do if you invent you don't publish anywhere before filing your patent application so you did some research work you uh, you invented a new uh, you invented something and you find that it is a new uh, invention and uh, you also uh, checked for the non obviousness of your invention and you know that it has got industrial application then what do you do what to do if you invent <laughs> don't publish anywhere before filing your patent application so file i file provisional or complete specification with your application check for your technical or commercial viability and after complete development file request for examination that is within uh, 36 months get your uh, get your patent commercialize your patent that is you can make it you can sell it you can license it you can assign somebody to sell it or whatever you want you can use it then you should do a field watch that is regular search of patent and non patent documents and other news from the industry you have to keep a watch on the uh, field because some uh, there is a chance for somebody to infringe your patent so before starting the research if you have some idea then you should think whether somebody has invented it or invented it so far for that you can contact your the ipr cell of your college or you can approach some searching agency or you can approach some patent attorneys and find out whether any anybody has invented anything so uh, or uh, what is uh, the stage up to which your invention has reached and so all the literature survey and prior art you have to look into before starting the research so you can use state of the art research search with advanced tools like international patent classification etc etc you can use lot of advanced tool then you have to review it you have to disclose your invention and you have to distinguish your invention from the prior art clearly so you can do a Uh, perform a search for your patent literature in the united states patent office where that is the website is www.uspto.gov where you will get all the awarded patents and the patent applications also then wipo is world intellectual property organization the website is given here you can write it down if you want so you can search all the Uh, pct applications pct means patent corporation treaty that is a treaty where a number of uh, countries are members so if uh, this wipo that is a world intellectual property organization administers uh, they do all the administration works of the uh, countries uh, that has signed the patent corporation treaty so you can uh, if you file a patent in the wipo then uh, you will get the uh, priority of the date of filing of your application in all the member countries but remember that there is nothing like a world patent or something like that there is, you can apply a pct application uh, or you can file an international patent application but in order to uh, get uh, the right 
you have to uh, file independent application in the countries where you want your invention to be protected. Like if you want to protect your uh, invention in US, you have to file a US patent application in the US patent office. And if you want to uh, get your invention uh, protected in China, you have to apply a Chinese apply for a Chinese patent. Likewise, you have to apply uh, in the countries where you want to. You have to apply independently in all the countries where you want to protect your invention because patents are territorial in nature. And you can search all the European patent in the website www.espacenet.com. So novelty and non-obviousness should be there, which allows for drafting claims with appropriate scope. And this I will explain in the coming slides. What are this novel, um, how to uh, draft your invention. Now you know what, what is novelty and non-obviousness. And uh, uh, you have to identify the problems or the deficiencies in the prior art also to sufficiently explain your invention. So you have a duty to disclose all the references materially relevant to the patentability of invention. So this is the US patent uh, uh, search um, window. And this you will get in the USPTO website. So here you can see that there are issued patents and published application and in the issued patents uh, you can search a quick search where you can give any keywords or an advanced search where, where you can uh, limit your uh, search like you can give either the title you can select or you can uh, sell a search by, by the inventor name and so on. Then patent number search also you can do uh, like uh, even before uh, awarding the patent, they will publish your application so that if somebody is there uh, who want to, uh, who feel that the new patent application has infringed their patent or something like that, they can sue or they can um, act against the uh, patent being awarded. So you can file an uh, suit against the patent application. So that will also be published uh, in the uh, website. So the published application also uh, you, you will get in the US patent as well as in the Indian patent office site. So you can do a quick search, advanced search or a publication number search and find out what are the published applications. So this is the uh, Indian patent website where granted patents and published patent applications you can search. And you can you will also get the application status of your patent, etc. etc. All those things are also available in the website. So what are the procedures for obtaining patents in India? So who can file actually a patent? The true and the first inventor and then the assignee of true and first inventor whom uh, the invent uh, the assignee means like uh, if you are doing a research and the research work is actually funded by dst or csir when they uh, when they when you apply or when you are granted the patent you can see if you, when you are granted the funding you can see that there is a condition there are certain terms and condition in which they will say that all the patent and inventions coming out of this funding will be the sole proper of DST or CSIR. That means they are the assignees. Okay. And the researcher who works on the, uh, who works or uh, who invents uh, the new invention will be the inventor. Okay. The assignee will always have the um, right, the financial right. And actually not the 100% financial right. There's, uh, you can make some agreement with the uh, funding agency, your institution and the inventors how to divide the financial outcome. Okay, you can enter into an MOU and sell your invention once you get the patent. Then uh, a legal representative, representative. So this assignee, if it is DST, DST will file the patent. So they will bear all the expenditure. Uh, 
then legal representative of a deceased person if the person is deceased the legal representative can file the patent then you can uh, file your patent either alone or jointly with other person then form of application the patent shall be for one invention only and it should be filed in the prescribed format filed in the patent office and this um, patent application can be accompanied by a provisional or complete specification i will uh, explain this provisional and complete specification so how to file a patent application by filing a hard copy or you can file it online to the patent office and there are four patent offices in india first one is in mumbai where uh, the states of gujarat maharashtra madhya pradesh goa and chatisgarh and the united uh, union territories of daman and diu and dadra and nagar haveli are included so if your address is in this territory you have to file your patent in the mumbai patent office likewise there is a patent office in chennai where the inventions or the address of your um, address of your the inventor is in andhra pradesh telangana karnataka kerala or tamil nadu and the union territories of pondicherry and lakshadweep you have to file it in the chennai office likewise in new delhi where haryana himachal pradesh punjab rajasthan uttar pradesh uttarakhand delhi and the union territories of chatisgarh jammu and kashmir and ladakh is included and rest of india has to file their patent application in the kolkata patent office so if you look in the indian law and practice first comes first served so you should be the first one to file your first to file system is there in uh, anywhere in the world it is first to file system this is important uh, in the scenario that you you have an idea the same idea can be uh, with somebody else in europe or russia or somebody uh, somewhere else in the world and if your idea has been converted into an invention invention then who is who is uh, filing the application first will get the priority okay so if if you are waiting uh, you just wait for some time and somebody else which have uh, who had the same idea and who invented your uh, the same thing and they are filing an application in russia um, prior to you 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 file your application then the russian will get the priority so you should file your patent or your invention as early as possible so the documents to be submitted are the application then the specification of the invention then this foreign filing particulars that means you can i have told you that there is a wipo uh, international patent application you can file in the wipo office so if uh, you have filed such an application that details has to be given then details of the inventors uh, if required because if there are some assignees and they are filing the patent uh, if it is required they have to give the details of the inventors and then early publication that means you are filing a patent application for an invention uh, which you have modified the earlier you have a pen, invention and you just modified the invention and then you are filing again so you have to give the details of the early publication and all other early publications you have to give then you have to request uh, your patent application for examination so the important things that is the necessary things are you have to file the application form 1 form 2 that is a specification and uh, within 48 months you have to request for examination of your patent application otherwise if you didn't request for examination of your patent application it will be considered as withdrawn so you have to give a request for examining your patent application so these are the normal fees for uh, patent application so normally for indian patent application you have uh, you have to give a fees of 1600 only for a natural person 
and uh, request for examination is 4000 only so if you know how to draft your claims and how to draft your patents and you are confident enough to file your application by yourself to the patent office you can do it with this much amount of money otherwise you have to approach a patent attorney or a patent agent so that they will file your patent application for you in the patent office like uh, if you have a case you can approach an uh, approach an advocate or you can defend yourself in the court likewise if you are confident enough you can file your application directly or you can approach a patent attorney or a patent agent so these are the uh, different uh, fees uh, for different need of your patent application like uh the uh, necessary the uh, necessary things are the application fee and the request for examination all others if you want only you can uh, apply for so this pct system i have mentioned it is a patent filing system not a patent granting system there is no pct patent or international patent there is no nothing like that but this patent corporation treaty is a system that provides for an international phase comprising filing of the international application then international search international publication and international preliminary examination and the decision on granting patents is taken exclusively by national or regional offices in the national phase so you can protect your invention in other countries also because you can file your ordinary application and within 12 months you can file a conventional application in uh, you can file uh, your international application within uh, 31 months that uh, that much time you will get for filing your application in other countries now coming to specification you can give either a provisional specification or a complete specification so a provisional specification is actually a techno legal document which describes all features of the invention and need not contain the claims so there are different parts of a patent and a provisional application does not need uh, any claims but you have to disclose your invention as much as possible and this provisional specification decides the date of the application so this is actually the preamble that is used in the patent application that is the following specification describes the invention and you have to describe your invention and this uh, provisionally uh, uh, in uh, specification is actually used to establish the priority of your invention in case the disclosed invention is in a conceptual stage that is not in the completed form and delay is expected in sub submitting the complete specification and it will not give any legal right to the applicant and it is very important to establish the earliest ownership no patent will be granted with respect to a provisional specification or a provisional application but it will stand as a permanent independent legal and scientific document which you cannot on which you cannot make any amendments you cannot change the provisional specifications of your provisional application but you can add but you cannot make any change so when uh, this provisional specifications are usually um, uh, you apply for a provisional application because when the, when there is an urgency or there is a commercial disclosure or submission of thesis or something like that so you can apply for a provisional specification or inventors or seniors are leaving the company then also you can apply for a provisional specification then accidental disclosure occurs so you Uh, at at the earliest you file for a provisional application so and if there are many competitors and you are afraid that uh, um, before completing the uh, invention somebody uh, will take or uh, somebody else will apply then you can apply for a uh, provisional applications 
So within 12 months, you have to file the complete specification of your invention. And this complete specification includes the description and claims. Description means it discusses the invention and claims define the boundary of the monopoly that will be given to you. So complete specification should contain the fully and particularly it should describe the invention and its operation or use and the method by which it has to, it is to be performed and it should disclose the best method of performing the invention which is known to the applicant and for which he is entitled to claim the protection and it should end with a claim or claims defining the scope of the invention for which protection is claimed. The complete specification should include the title, description of the invention, claims and drawings. And an abstract of the invention. So title of the invention should reflect the main art of the invention and it should be very precise, meaningful and should be normally within 15 words. Then this comes under the uh, second one that is the description uh, in the description of the invention you can include the detailed description of the invention actually sets out best mode of performing the invention and it should describe the invention in greater detail with examples or illustration or tables or graphs or diagrams etc and it should and the description should be sufficient to enable a skilled person to put the invention into practice so it can uh, you can include the field of invention uh, which describes the scope of the invention and subject matter of the invention and background of the invention like uh, what others have described and what problems have not been seen uh, or solved in the prior art and then the objection objects of the invention that is um, the advantage of the invention, then the solution of the existing technical problem associated with the existing field and advantages of the invention, etc. can also be included and you can give a summary of the invention also. Then the brief description of the drawing should be there in the descriptive part and uh, the claims should be there and these claims are the functions of the claims are to limit your monopoly. That is why uh, you have to write the claims. Then uh, it makes the boundaries of your invention. So you cannot claim anything. Uh, you cannot claim anything which is not claimed in the invention. That is not claimed is disclaimed. So it should actually relate to a single invention and it should be clear and concise. It should be supported by description and the principal claim that is the first claim should actually define all essential novel features and preferred features may be given in the subordinate claims. So actually these claims are the essence of a patent. And it actually defined the invention which the inventor holds as his exclusive property and he will get the right to exclude others from making, using and selling. So whatever you claim in the claims part will be yours. So it actually specify the scope of ownership in a piece of property that is the intellectual property. So during claim drafting, the choice of words used in the patent claim should be dealt in a great understanding and thought. So it's also important in patent prosecution in the patent office and patent litigation in courts. So it should be clearly worded, precise without any unnecessary repetition. So you should remember that rights are given to claims only. Not for any matter described in the complete specification, you will not get any claim. So you will get the rights for the part that is claimed in the claims only. And it defines the boundaries of legal protection and form a protective fence around the invention. And each claim is evaluated on its own merit and therefore if one of the claims is objected, it does not mean that the rest of the claims are invalid. 
one when they examine their claims they may object one part or uh, one of the claims can be objected but uh, that doesn't mean that rest of the claims are invalid and as i have mentioned already the term of the patent is 20 years and date of patent is the date of filing of the application so uh, this is how the united states of uh, us patent looks like the front page and these are uh, some of the uh, molecules that has been isolated in our lab uh, which is patented so there are a number of careers in intellectual property like you can be an ip managers in multinational companies and knowledge process outsourcing firms you can be technology transfer experts then you can be patent examiners or trademark examiners then by uh, lawyers if you are a lawyer you can uh, specialize in intellectual property rights and can be a patent and trademark attorney then you can write the patent agent examination and if you pass it you can register as a patent agent then you can be patent search experts as well so acknowledgments are to the websites of uh, wipo uspto indian patent office so it is all those books conference journals and uh, ipa workshops i have attended and i sincerely acknowledge them and extend my courtesy to use their knowledge for the sustainable development of society on a non profit basis and thank you for your patient listening and if you have any doubts i i am happy to answer uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, yeah yeah ma'am i had a question yeah. if we have got a, a natural uh, uh, product and how much modification needs to be done before it is it can be patented like you need to make some formulation only then it can be patented or you modify it formulations are uh, actually per se they are not patentable there are lot of conditions on that actually there are nutraceutical formulation patented formulations of nutraceutical uh, products like uh, sun pharma sami there are uh, nutraceutical products uh, they have got patent but formulations as such you cannot uh, patent it's little bit more complex but uh, if you are developing a process for a natural product isolation which is new uh, which has got some industrial application or something like that you can patent it and if you are uh, if uh, if it is a new uh, natural product you can actually patent the uh, product if it is viable uh, you can patent the process and if you are synthesizing some new products which is not known then you can uh, file a patent application for the uh, new product product patent you can apply but so now, it these, should, huh? these nutraceutical products are natural products only you know but not just... natural products as such they might have uh, the, the that is little bit more complex uh, regarding patenting the nutraceuticals because uh, some are uh, um, you know they have to obey this patentability conditions only then it is patentable normally the formulations are not patentable like but um, somehow they have uh, it's more a complex area which i am not uh, very much uh, i cannot explain it in such a way like normally the formulations are not patentable but uh, they have got product patents that is the main thing they are functionalizing the natural products and taking a product and they are patenting it and making formulations with that and a uh, lot of uh, such complexity is there with the nutraceutical products okay ma'am okay. as such uh, the natural product if it is not a known product or you are developing a process or if it is a new thing uh, you can actually patent it if it is economically viable and you can prove an industrial application is there any other question ma'am it can be a new combination of known compounds that can be patented no 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 just a combination of known compounds you cannot patent this so that uh, non patentable invention i have mentioned that a combination of two known things cannot be patented 
Uh, dear participants, if uh, there is any doubts, uh, kindly unmute yourself and ask them. Grace, ma'am, I think uh, there is more, no more questions. Uh, is it okay? You can wind up. Yeah, you can wind up. Can. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you. I Thank hope you, you understood what I have explained. Yeah, you, uh, you have covered almost all the aspects of it. It was a very good introduction. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.